Section 1.6. This is about dividing whole numbers. If we separate a quantity into equal parts, that's called division. So for example, we can take 20 divided by 4, which equals 5. 18 divided by 3 is equal to 6. And 14 divided by 2 is equal to 7. We're going to look at some specific pieces of those problems. So we're looking at the 5 and the 6 and the 7. Those are all the results of the division. So those are called quotients. Now if we look at the number that we're dividing in each one of these, so the 20, the 18, and the 14, those are called dividends. And finally, if we look at the numbers that we're dividing by, so the 4 and the 3 and the 2, those are called divisors. The division properties of 1. The quotient of any number and that same number is 1. What that means is that if we divide any number by itself, we get 1. So 6 divided by 6 is 1, 5 divided by 5 is 1, and 7 divided by 7 is 1. Now the division properties of 0, the first one says that the quotient of 0 in any number, except for 0, is 0. So if we divide 0 by 6, we get 0. If we divide 0 by 5, we get 0. And if we divide 0 by 7, we get 0. The reverse of that is if we have the quotient of a number and 0. If we're dividing by 0, we get something that's undefined. So notice the difference between these problems and the ones that we had up here. In this one, we're taking 6 and trying to divide it by 0. That's undefined. In this one, we're trying to divide 5 by 0. And in this one, we're trying to divide 7 by 0. So these are all turned around from what the ones up here were. In these ones, we had 0 as our dividend and another number as our divisor. A helpful hint for division is that since division and multiplication are reverse operations, we can check a division problem by multiplying. So we're going to do some division problems and then we'll check them by multiplying. So 1570 divided by 3 and remember whichever number comes first here is the one that goes under the division sign. So first we're going to compare the 3 to the first number here. Well, it's actually larger than 1. So then we're going to go over to the next place. So we're going to look at 3 and 15. And 3 goes into 15 five times. And this is another place where you have to be very careful to line up your columns correctly. So we're putting the 5 right over the number that we were dividing, which was the 15. Then we multiply this back out. So 5 times 3 is 15. And we're going to write that right under the 15 we had there. We can write two zeros for placeholders there. Then we need to subtract these two numbers. So we're taking 1,570 minus 1,500. And we're just going to get 70. So now we're going to compare the 3 to the first digit that we have in our 70. Well, 3 goes into 7 two times. So we have the 2 up here in the same column as the 7 was. Then we multiply again. 2 times 3 is going to equal 6. So we end up here with 60. Then we're going to subtract again and get 10. Now we would compare the 3 to the 1, but 3 is bigger than 1. So that means we have to compare the 3 to the 10. Well, 3 goes into 10 three times. Then we have 3 times 3 when we multiply this back out. 3 times 3 is 9. And if we subtract 10 minus 9, we get 1. So our answer is going to be 523 with a remainder of 1. OK, let's look at this problem now. In this one, we're taking 7,070 and dividing it by 14. So we'll start by comparing the 14 to the first two digits here. 
since this is a two-digit number, we need to compare it to a two-digit two number here to start with. So we're looking at 14 and 70. We could guess that 14 goes into 70 about five times. Now to do this next step, we have to multiply the 5 times the 14. You can write this out to the side if you want to. So if we take 5 times 14, 5 times 4 is 20, so we carry the 2, and then 5 times 1 is 5, plus 2 is 7. So when we do that, we actually get exactly 70. So again, the 70 goes right here so that the 0 is underneath the 5. And then we're subtracting. If you want to, you can write the rest of these digits in as zeros. So now we're subtracting. We get 0 there and 7 there. And these two are just zeros. So now we have another 70. But notice that the next place in our quotient up here, the next column that we have is this one. So if we compare the 14 to the 7, 14 is bigger than 7. So we're not going to have anything there. So we're going to put a 0 here to hold that place. Then we can compare the 14 to the 70. So we're clear over here to the 1's column. And we already know that 14 goes into 75 times. So now we have 5 times 14 is going to give us 70. And then we subtract this, we just get 0. So this one is just 505 with a remainder of 0. Now if we want to check this one, we said that we could check these by multiplying. So if we want to check this, then we would multiply 505 times 14. So we'd have 5 times 4 is 20. We carry the 2. 0 times 4 is 0, plus 2 is 2, and then 5 times 4 is 20. And then with the 1, we have 5 times 1. Oops, we have to put our 0 here for a placeholder. We have 5 times 1 is 5, 0 times 1 is 0, and 5 times 1 is 5. Now if we add up our two rows, we get 0, 7, 0, and 7. We got 7,070, which is what we started with. So that one checks. OK, one more here. If we want to divide 41,270 by 97, again, that means that we're putting the 41,270 under our division sign. So we're going to start out comparing the 97 to the first two digits here. Again, 97 is actually bigger than 41, so that means we're going to go over to the third digit. So we're actually going to compare 97 to 412. And we have to at least estimate how many times 97 will go into 412. And if you think about it, since 97 is very close to 100, it's probably going to go into 412 about four times. Make a guess here that this is four, then we need to do 4 times 97 to check this. So we'd have 28 carry the 2, 36 times 2 is 38. We can put our 388 under here and fill in the rest of the zeros. So 0 minus 0 is 0, 7 minus 0 is 7. We're going to have to do some borrowing here. So we borrow there and make that a 0. So now we have 12 minus 8 is 4. Oops, and now we have 0 minus 8. So we have to borrow again. So we have to make that a 10 and make this a 3. So 10 minus 8 gives us 2, and then 3 minus 3 is 0. Again, we're looking at our 97, and we'd start by comparing it to the 24 but it's bigger than 24. So now we're going to go over to the third digit of that. So we're comparing 97 to 247. And again, since 97 is almost 100, we could make a guess that 97 would go into this about two times. In this, we, we're better off if we underestimate than if we overestimate. 
So 2 times 7 is 14. Carry the 1, and then 9 times 2 is 18, plus 1 is 19. Now if we subtract these two, you have to borrow here. So I have 14 minus 9 is 5, and then 1 minus 1 is 0. So one more time, we're comparing the 97 to the 530. We can make a guess that it goes in there about 5 times. So 5 times 97, 5 times 7 is 35. We carry the 3, 5 times 9 is 45, plus 3 gives us 48. So we've got 485 down here, and we're going to subtract. So we have to do some borrowing here. So 10 minus 5 is 5, and then we're going to have to borrow again here since 8 is bigger than 2. So we make that a 12, and we borrow from this column. So 12 minus 8 is 4, and then 4 minus 4 would be 0. Now our final number down here, 45, is smaller than 97. So we have 425 with a remainder of 45 for our final answer. And here are some keywords and phrases that signal that we need to use division in a problem. If we say we want to divide 15 by 3, that means the 15 comes first. So we could write it this way, or if we want to use our division symbol, we would write it like this. The quotient of 12 and 6, again in this one, the 12 comes first, if we're writing it with a division symbol. If we want to write it in this form, then the 12 is going to go underneath. Eight divided by four, we could write it this way, or we could write it this way with the eight underneath and the four outside. Okay, and if we talk about sharing equally, that's exactly what division means. If we want to figure out how we would divide $20 equally among five people, that means that we're taking the 20 and dividing it by five. So to write this out in symbols, this would be 20 divided by 5, or we could write it this way. One place where we use division is in finding averages. Let's say that we had some grades for a pre-algebra class at the end of the semester. What if this student wanted to know his average? Well, what we would have to do would be to find the sum of all these scores and then divide it by the number of scores that we have. So let's see, we have... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 scores. So we're going to add all these scores up and divide the answer by 10. And if we added all those up, the sum would be 880. So our average would be 880 divided by the number of scores we had, which was 10. And if we divide 880 by 10, we get 88. So this student's average grade was an 88. Here's some examples. First, we want to find the quotient of 94 and 5. Well, again, that means that the 95 goes under our division symbol and the 5 goes on the outside. So if we're doing long division, we'd compare the 5 with the 9. Well, 5 goes into 9 one time. And we take 1 times 5 is 5. Then if we subtract, 4 minus 0 is 4, and 9 minus 5 is 4. Now if we compare the 5 to the 4, 5 is bigger than 4. So we'll have to go over to the next, next digit. So how many times does 5 go into 44? Well, it goes 
in 8 times. If we tried to make it 9 times, that would be 45. That would be too big. So the most we can do is 8. So then we have 8 times 5 is 40. And then we subtract here, so we have 4 minus 0 equals 4, and 4 minus 4 equals 0. So this would be 18 with a remainder of 4. Now, Amy earned $1,722 selling calendars. If each calendar cost $14, how many calendars did she sell? So what we need to do in this one is take $1,722 and divide it by 14 to get the number of calendars that Amy sold. So here's how we could set up our division problem. And again, we're going to compare the 14 to the first two digits here. So 14 goes into 17 once. And if we multiply 1 times 14, we get 14. Then if we subtract, we get 2 and 2 and a 3. Now we can compare the 14 with the first two digits here. So we're comparing 14 with 32. And 14 would go in there two times. So if we take 2 times 14, we're going to get 8 and a 2. So we get 28. If we subtract one more time here, we have to do a little bit of borrowing. So we get 42. And 14 goes into 42 three times. And if we multiply this back out, we would find out that this came out to be exactly 42. So we just end up with 123. So she sold 123 calendars. Okay, finally, during the semester, Kyle's test scores were 87, 93, 62, and 83. What was Kyle's average for the semester? So here again, we're doing an average. That means that we want to find the sum of these scores. So we want to find the sum of 87, 93, 62, and 83. And then we're going to divide that by the number of scores we have. And we have four scores there, so we're going to divide it by four. So if we add these four numbers, seven plus three is 10, plus another five is going to give us 15. If we carry the 1, then we have 9 plus 9 is 18, plus 6 is 24, plus 8 is 32. So our sum is 325. Now we want to divide 325 by 4. So we're comparing the 4 with the 3, but 4 is bigger than 3, so that means we have to compare the 4 with the 32. 4 times 8 is 32, so we get 8 there. When we multiply it back out, we get 320. And then if we're subtracting this, we end up with a 5. So then 4 goes into 5 once. We multiply that back out, we get 4. So we end up with a remainder of 1. So if we're thinking about the nearest whole number here, then his average would be 81.